Hi everyone and welcome to part one of my HDR tutorial. HDR or high dynamic range imaging is something that's uh, really kind of caught on fire lately and uh, I, I play with it quite a bit so I figured you know what I've had some requests I'm gonna go ahead and put this out there so that people can see what my actual HDR workflow is. So as you can see here on the screen I'm not gonna kind of bore you with a lot of details I'm gonna try to get to the meat and potatoes of this. Uh, as you can see on the screen I've got a shot of a car it's not a bad shot. I, I, I wouldn't be completely disappointed, but you know what? There's a lot of different detail in here in the shadows and some in the highlights in here that you really just can't capture in one shot. Um, here's So what you do uh, to set up your HDR, you need to use a tripod first of all. You can do it without a tripod. You can also make HDRs from one raw file, but trust me, to get the best results, you want to use a tripod. You want to set it up and take a, a normal exposure. You're going to want to take some overexposure shots and some underexposure. Um, three shots usually gets you a pretty good range. You can do a two stop, a normal, and a plus two. Um, you can do a one and one. It just depends on the scene. Uh, I know people who've used 14 images for their HDR. That's a little overkill if you ask me, but it's been done. Okay, I'm going to hold the shift button and collect, click on here and select all three of my images. And then I'm going to go ahead and take these images into uh, my camera raw. So I'm going to right or uh, click on the uh, control key and click open in camera raw. You can also right click and get to that menu if you're on a PC. All right, this is the reason I like using camera raw instead of using photomatics, let's say, to combine my raw images. They both open the raw images. The problem is photomatics doesn't let you correct the raw image before processing for HDR. And Photoshop using camera raw does and that's why I really prefer to do it this way because let's face it my images just are not always perfect before I want them to go into the other into uh, the tone mapping portion um, which you'll see in part two but this is where it's so great to use camera raw first of all say I've got dust on my sensor well if I use a different raw processing to create the HDR it's not going to remove those dust but because I'm using the CS3 camera raw and I can select all because my dust is going to appear in every single place uh, on that screen because it's actually on the sensor. So, oh, that's not a red eye. What am I doing? There's my tool. All right. It's my little healing tool right here. I'm going to click on that. And you know what it does is because I have selected all, it applies it to every single image. And uh, because that dust is on every place in the same place, it's going to go ahead and correct it on all of them. Now let me see if we've got any more real quick. I don't want to take up a lot of time with this because there's other things to do. Okay, there's a big big one right there and i got to get rid of that. So I'm going to click there. It's going to remove it from all three images and that's one of the reasons why I really love using this program instead of the photomatics for my conversion. Alright, now the other nice thing is I can do things like I can make a clarity adjustment. Um, I can go up here and do a... Uh, now I'm going to adjust the exposure because I'm going to I, I want those exposure variances, so I want them set to normal so that it captures uh, what the camera was trying to get, which was an overexposure and an underexposure. I can correct those in here, but that's kind of not the whole point. Um, but I can do things like sharpening, um, which you can't do in Photomatic. So all these combined are why I actually love to use Photoshop for this process. The other thing is, and I get this from other people, is, well, can you do this out of Lightroom? You can do this out of Lightroom kind of in a backwards sort of way but I tell you what the bridge for some things the bridge is just amazing and this is one of those things now um, you've got tools at the top if you look at your menus up here there's a tools menu and down at the bottom of that is one that says Photoshop now what this does is it takes whatever image you have selected and it carries into Photoshop to do these actual uh, processes it'll do a batch a contact sheet image processor well if you look right here kind of in the middle merge to HDR is one that we can select. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Merge to HDR. It's going to pull my image into Photoshop. And uh, you know what? I already actually had a uh, an image in there. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and... Now this is doing its thing over here. You can see it's taking these images. It's stacking them up in Photoshop. It's going to take a little while to do this because I'm using a D2X file, which is a rather large file size. If you're using a smaller image sensor obviously your images are going to be smaller and this will probably go a little faster um, it works pretty well on the Mac uh, I don't have too many problems with it but um, so as you can see on the right hand side 
three files right here and then the merge to HDR. So it's going to take all these and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to align the layers uh, based on the content. Well, the nice thing is I use a tripod. Uh, these things should not have shifted. Although it was a little windy, there may be a little bit of alignment that it has to do, but not very much. And if you use a tripod, it'll actually speed the process because it doesn't have to work so hard so long at doing the alignment. Once the alignment's done, it's actually taking these and combining all those images into a 32-bit image. Now, when it gets done creating that 32-bit image, um, it's not going to look very good on your screen. And here we go. There's the 32-bit image. You can see on the left you have your sources, and there's the plus and the minus and my normal exposures. And over here is a set white point preview. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I never use it. I never adjust it. I just leave it as is. The only thing I do is I come up here to the top and I click OK. And that's going to go ahead and complete the, the, the process, create a file, and show it to me in Photoshop. Now let me tell you, when it shows it to me in Photoshop, it's not going to be that good looking of a file. And the reason is, it's trying to display a 32-bit file in a 24-bit environment. And that just isn't going to work for us or for most people. Most people can't display 32-bit images in their screen configuration. Uh, there's just not really any monitors out there may display that many colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this and we're going to tone map. We're going to map color and, and quality back into this image using the, Im the information that it actually has. Now to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to save the file. So I'm going to hit uh, Command Shift S or Control Shift S or you can go File, Save As, whatever you choose. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to create a file called car. Now you notice it says PSD. You do not want PSD as your file type. What you want to do is you want to come down here and you want to click on Radiance. Okay. Radiance is going to be the one that gives us that HDR file and it's going to contain all that 32 bit of information. So I'm going to click on save and it's saving that file. It's done. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Okay, and now I'm going to go back to bridge, and you can see over here, here's car.hdr. Now, the bridge cannot display that HDR file, but it will show you a thumbnail for it so that you know it exists. Um, so, in part two, we're going to tone map this thing. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.